I'm kind of a mountain ambassador to show what is happening, to educate so that people can start making choices that counter what's happening in this world. They took my family cemetery and they destroyed it. They took 7,000 acres around me and destroyed it. I'm prepared to do what I have to do to stay here. I'm prepared to do what I have to do to fight for it. When I first started coming here to Cayford, a lot of the areas that you just saw that were flattened were living, viable mountains uh, with wildlife. They weren't these flattened moonscapes of nothingness that you see now. I'm Dr. Teresa Burris and I teach at Radford University in the English Department and Appalachian Studies program. As a teacher, my role is to educate my students. Mm -hmm. So many of my students, even from Appalachia, don't even know about mountaintop removal. So it's my, I think it's my obligation, I'm kind of a mountain ambassador, to show what is happening, to educate so that people can start making choices that counter what's happening in this world. The Appalachian Forest contain the seeds to keep our environment going. We are destroying our environment, and here in Appalachia, we've got the seeds to keep it going. We've got the most biodiverse environment in the world behind the rainforest. We've got the natural water sources. Then we've got nat natural aquifers producing clean water and we're destroying that for coal. Not only is an environment being destroyed, but also an entire distinct culture and way of life are being destroyed because the people are being run out. Larry Gibson is a very unique spokesperson for the cause to stop mountaintop removal because he has held out. He's, he's sitting on a piece of property that is worth multi-millions because of the coal that's there. But he represents the best of Appalachia in terms of not being bought and paid for. I've always told the people who would listen that I would not let them down and reverse my sayings and my thoughts on this issue. I'm not reversing on my thinking if we don't do something, we're going to run out of pure, serene, beautiful land to live on, an air to breathe. I'm in a hurry at doing what I'm doing because time's running out. And if I don't get the people mad and get them to react to what's happening to them, then they'll never change anything. I've always said you should have a say about what quality of health you have, what quality of life you have, what quality of air and water you have. You should have a say on these things, but the people of Appalachia don't have that say anymore. Contented people, contented people with their life will never fight back. So I'm trying to unmove you, unnerve you, to get you to move, to react to what's happening, not only to you, and you don't even know it, but the people you have never met. That's why I'm doing what I do. You know, believe it or not, I'm prepared to do what I have to do to stay here. I'm prepared to do what I have to do to fight for it. They took my family cemetery and they destroyed it. They took 7,000 acres around me and destroyed it. I will not be pushed off this place. There has to be something in a person's life that is worth taking a stand for. It just makes me physically sick to look at a mountaintop removal site like this. Um, you know, we've been working on coal issues in our own community for, for quite a while, but when I first started coming here to Cayford, a lot of the areas that you just saw that were flattened were living, viable mountains uh, with wildlife. 
they weren't these flattened moonscapes of nothingness that you see now. What we are asking people to do, one of the things, aside from our local community organizing, is um, to get people really to, to write, to call, to contact the Obama administration and say, please do not put money on this coal. You know, if we want real economic stimulus, it needs to be with infinite non-polluting resources, not a diminishing supply that's going to contaminate our water and, and have our land falling into the ground or blast the mountaintops away. Um, I spoke on a panel with some other women about these issues, and one of the people in the audience asked us, well, why don't you just move? Well, you know, we never ask them to come in here and destroy our communities. But she verbalized it better than, you know, it was what I was thinking, but, but she really put it into a nutshell. Um, she was a Navajo woman from out west, and she said, my soul is in that land. My soul is in that land. What else can you say? Some people say a man is made out of mud. A poor man's made out of muscle and blood. Muscle and blood and skin and bones. A mind that's weak and a back that's strong. You load 16 tons. Why you get another day old and deeper in depth? St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go I owe my soul to the company store I was born one morning when the sun didn't shine I picked up my shovel and I walked to the mine I loaded 16 tons a number nine coal And the straw boss said, well, to bless my soul You load 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go I owe my soul to the company store I was born one morning, it was drizzling rain Fighting and trouble are my middle name I was raised in the cane break by an old mama line Can't no high tone woman make me walk the line You load 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go I owe my soul to the company store If you see me coming, better step aside A lot of men didn't, a lot of men died One fist of iron, the other of steel If the right one don't get you, then the left one will You load 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go I owe my soul to the company store.